we're going to segue onto the Broner fight versus Santiago. Like yeah. I said, we, we have a lot to unpack and I have to keep... But when we get to this Adrian Broner thing, um, there's just so many things that we could approach. Uh, the first thing I, 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 I that comes to mind, Haley, is we must always remember that fighters have an opportunity to build themselves up, build their brands. What I've noticed with some of our guys that they don't take the opportunity to build the brand the way it should be built for longevity. Okay. This is no knock on Adrian Broner at all, but what I'm bringing to, to the light is boxing at large. The opportunity is though he who makes the most sacrifice, Bernard Hopkins, guys who live it, Andre Ward, even Gennady Golovkin guys, people who you don't see struggle around and about with weight because they sacrifice. When I say the phrase levels to this game, what level of sacrifice are you willing to endure? Sacrifice meaning after the fight, the after party is used to do media and take pictures with the fans. Go home. That's a hard ask for a 23 year old. It's a hard <laughs> ask for seriously, but what my fighters got an opportunity to see and the guys who I was just basically having to realize one thing, I can be out here and I can just be throwing my hands in the air and living the life because we are the team with the medal. Or I could say, this is very temporary if I don't go home and get prepared for the next battles, which are everything that come. So uh, who's willing to sacrifice the next tier of fun, partying, you know, s creating that, that, that mantra of self ish, not self less. That's why you see Andre Ward, Bernard Hopkins and even Floyd Mayweather, he just did not, even though, I mean, the guy's maniacal about training, who runs from the strip club. So he he just didn't indulge in other stuff. That's, those are sacrifices. No one, no one's doing what Floyd is. Like, Bernard's not even going out. You know, Ward, family, married, he good. He ain't getting, he ain't, he's not even around temptation. Floyd is in the temptation, creating the temptation, and running from the club. Man, that's a whole different level of beast. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, he's true. yeah, he's in the belly of the beast. So, with that being said, I look at um, the Adrian Broner fight, Santiago, and and I kind of knew what I was going to get. Anytime you got to lose upwards of forty pounds for a fight, tells me you have not made the sacrifice to level up people keep saying and i'll put some comments not what i say but what his his peers are saying on twitter so this next segment is twitter talk so we'll start with one of the guys who who are in the top of the food chain with tony harrison and yeah he spoke specifically that the way that Broner is fighting is not enough to get it done. He's not the only one. Uh, there are a multitude of other people. That's Tony Harrison, former uh, junior middleweight champion of the world, dethroned by Charlo. And as I say, Charlo, let's see what Charlo had to say. Let me see. Can you see that? Wow. What? W he did WTF. Yeah. That's crazy another bad decision bad, oh yeah bad decision yeah so as we bumble around and see what his peers are saying these are people that are his peers mm -hmm. Th this is what they are saying and <laughs> you can't take this lightly and you have to take it with a grain of salt that this guy has 
many opportunities to get back into the front of the food line and the, the food chain. Um, he didn't fight for two years, right? His last fight was Pacquiao. He didn't fight for two he years. Yeah, forty pounds in those two years. Yep. Now let's see what my uh, WBC pound for pound champion says. Can you see that? I thought, dude, won the fight. But what do I know? I thought. Oh, I thought, uh, dude, uh, won the fight. But what do I know? Yeah. Yeah. He said, I, th I thought, dude, won the fight. But what do I know? That's Terence Crawford. He's mm -hmm. saying he thought that Santiago won the fight. So does Steve Farhood and and Ben yeah. Broner. Comes My score the... was the same as Steve Farhood. With yeah. Round five and ten, we had opposite scores, but I I scored at one thirteen to one fourteen, actually one fifteen, but then Santiago mm -hmm. lost a point, so one fourteen. But uh, Broner was a, a a slow starter. You know, he he was not looking good those first few rounds. First six rounds. <laughs> yeah, first half of the fight. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the the rounds. I mean, the the, the rounds that count. Like you got to score. The mm -hmm. first round, they have him down as not connecting a punch. That's insane. Yeah. If you want to say you're an elite fighter, I don't think there's no elite fighter in the history of boxing that's gone around besides Vinny Pazianza. And that was because Roy Jones was impossible to hit. It wasn't because Vinny wasn't throwing. Sixth He's round in their middleweight, super middleweight mm -hmm. championship bout was the only time in a championship fight that a, a punch wasn't thrown. I mean, connected. And he wow. didn't. But Roy Jones was is the most athletic boxer in boxing history at that point he was at his pinnacle uh so that's you know that's not a big push but when you are 31 you should be smoking these guys that that only have 14 fights so when i think of that i think of the people who are in the media that also are really paying close attention to him like we have joy Taylor from the herd after the fight, the interview just read what joy wrote right there. This Bronner interview, Bronner interview is wild. Yeah. You know? Yeah. The, the interview was embarrassing. He cursed out Steve Farhood for doing his job, but yet and still I want, the coaches that are watching right now to pay close attention. If you allow your fighter to be out of control, out of control, they will be. It's just like a father who's just not home ever. That child won't operate the same way as he would if there was a father in the home. That goes without saying. Females who have their father in their life don't have daddy problems. You know what I'm saying? Those girls who have the daddy issues are in the strip club and doing things that are just a, a little bit out of character for someone who wants something in life. And they segue and they pivot. And, you know, this is not that isolate anybody because you got to do what you got to do no matter how you came up. But we just hope in the sport of boxing that these individuals realize that people are watching. And I was hopeful that after the fight, regardless of what happened, that his professionalism that he would carried weeks from weeks ago because he'd gotten in trouble not long ago and he has cases. And so we were hoping that once he really stood up and stood out and got an opportunity to get the light shine back on him in a positive way that he would take the opportunity to do that because your brand is now. He said he was, he was, he had $13 in his account when, before the fight happened. Holy crap. $13. And that tells me about how poor, important it is for fighters. And if you guys are watching how important it is to have people in your life that manage money, like Floyd is doing, you know, and look, and here's, you know, this is one of the last ones, you know, Rage and Bay drops it on him. And Terrence Crawford co-signs and laughs at it. Do you see that? Cash checks, pop bottles. <laughs> That's what you're going to do after the fight. That's the perception. She said, what's next? What's next? Cash checks, 
pop bottles mm -hmm. and you what i heard him say that really disturbed me is that he wanted al Heyman. he said al Heyman, y'all keep me in the ring and steven espinosa and i'll you know keep me out of trouble and isn't that like man trouble is gonna find you if you let trouble find you if you don't want trouble don't go find trouble you can't blame another grown man who's not getting in trouble that that for you getting in trouble that that is the epitome of i need counseling and this is no big this is not a knock everybody needs some counseling at some point in time in their life mike tyson got it i've talked to therapists you better know that at a point in time in your life where things are pivotal get talk get to people that you don't know someone who's not going to be biased and someone's not going to kiss your butt tony soprano had a freaking therapist so everybody can get a therapist if so, you know what I'm saying. Tony Soprano Enough had said. one. It's just a it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> on the, on, but I remember when I was young, coming up, I thought it was a bad thing. And now I brag about it. It's a cool thing. You yeah, know what I mean, as you great. get older, you realize, hey, I got a therapist. I got to go see. You know what I mean? That's a cool and, thing. And but mental go, health is so important. You know, we go to the gym to work out our bodies. Where do we go to work out our minds? And, and yeah, look at Tyson Fury and what he yeah. struggled with. Yeah, sure. yeah. King. It's a powerful thing, and Brandon Marshall does a great. He he has a whole entire program that he takes under some of the his sports facility, and that they concentrate solely neurologically. It's a beautiful awesome. thing, and yeah. stuff. So, with that being said, you know, Raging Bay dropped it, and it's it's just unfortunate. Some of the things that we have to say aren't super positive, and here's Team Tia Fimo with him after the fight and he pretty much said and still in in spanish i had to google it so he put it over there in the, in the comments and you know showed him some love and you know because he understand what it's going to be like like my meeting and conversation and sit down that i had with conan silviera of the ufc uh, american top team his 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 most valid points because he trains Amanda Nunez, all those killers over there train over at American Top Team. And he was just like, yo, me and him was just chopping it up before we even started our sit down conversation. And he was just like this, man. These guys really just don't understand. You know, once you get to the top, man, and you get that title around your waist, boom, that's when the fun starts. And then the fun is all that stuff you never thought was tied to being at the top. Those those demons, those devils, they coming at you. All the stuff, the stuff starts to tear apart, and you're like, I thought everything was supposed to come together. That's yeah. when the fun starts, man. And My I uncle Tony, Tony Zale, who was middleweight champion of the world in 1940 to 47, and again in 48. Mm -hmm. He always told my dad and all of his nephews that yeah. he coached in boxing, which yeah. then was trickled down to my brothers. No yeah. girls. They make your knees weak. <laughs> So even back in the 40s, they knew yeah. that those were there were temptations out there. And, you, you know, you look at that famous scene of um, from the Raging Bull where Jake LaMotta is pouring, you know, ice down his pants. <laughs> it's like <laughs> crazy. It's like you got to stay focused. If you if you're in this to be a real contender and you, yeah. if you want to be the best that you can be, you yeah. got to you got to keep the eye on the prize. You got to keep your eyes on the prize. And it's not always an easy thing. But T.O. T.O. knows and he's getting a taste of it. It's starting for him right now. So he's learning that, you know, wow, it's a lot more up here and you're going to learn. I've been around it. I mean, yeah. it's, it's a real tough thing. And a lot of things you lose a lot and sacrifice. What are you willing to sacrifice? And I tell the guys in my, in my under my tutelage, I say I, I, I'm willing to sacrifice it all. I don't say that with a grain of uh, at a faint of heart. I say it because this is not for the faint of heart. If you got a lot of things that you love around you and you can't let them go, you better not get in the sport of boxing. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to live this lifestyle where you are winning and you got all that other stuff tied to you still. You only get to this level whenever you sacrifice it all. So if you want to stay comfortable you want to keep all them friends, all that family surrounding you. You better go do something else because this ain't that. Mm -hmm. You got to lose a whole lot before you get into that place and into that space. 
How many seriously happy coaches do you see? I'm trying to tell you because they sacrifice it all because your fighters are your wife, period, and your children. So therefore, you better realize, I ain't just talking. You know, you'll see all these guys. This is why they crumble because they try to keep everything that they came up with. It's not possible and it's not going to happen. So you just got to realize the sacrifices are real and you don't want to mess your brand up with this, um, this, this negative energy that surrounds your heart. Get it out of there. Talk it out with people to understand that Tyson is, you never see Tyson get caught off guard right now, Haley, because he's been groomed to mm -hmm. handle conversations. Whereas it used to be Tyson be, he's, he's ready to tear heads off. So, I hope this was really something that gave some kind of respite for you who are watching this sport, that this is just something you have to learn and you have to be under the tutelage of people. So therefore, well, that's it. All I got with that Broner, I just hope he realizes this, that last night his brand looked not that good. You know, he came in wolfing, you know, not groomed. And he just didn't look healthy. He looked like a guy who's going to be prepping to play football. He was thick. They didn't make weight. They So they had to boost the weight, you know, clarification up to 147. So he came in at 146. They were supposed to fight at 140. These things just tell the story of what's going on, why your things are in shambles. There was a part of my life where things couldn't didn't appear that everything wouldn't gel. It was a lot of moving parts, but nothing with jail. And that's exactly where he is. So continue to pray for him and not dog him, but be in his corner and, and, and pray for the brother to get to where he can get to because he just got a boatload of money last night and that he does the right thing with it. Everybody's not Floyd. Floyd is investing. Floyd is making money. Every time you see him, he's doing something with somebody like three or four different ventures a day <laughs> on top of his stuff. So I watched Brown and I was just like, you, you want to emulate and duplicate this guy, but you're not willing to do any of the things that he's actually doing for real. You know, you want to emulate things he's doing in social media, but not what he's really doing when it's coming down to signing contracts and, 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 and real estate deals and you know floyd owns a skyscraper i mean <laughs> you got to think about it i'm just saying i just call a spade a spade when you want to do it man you got to do it for real when you get millions you got to be setting up your people you know your family because it's sacrifice and not being able to be with them being gone eight weeks at a time ten times ten weeks sometimes that's serious so you're gonna make that up somehow some way so what you got for us Haley, with the news uh, well, I do want to shout out to Iran the Blade Barkley, who is back in the hospital. Um, he had a stroke in October, a mild stroke, and um, he's just been struggling. He was out of the hospital. Now he's back in with pneumonia. So oh. please, please give us extra love and light and prayers. And, he, you know, the champ needs your yeah. strength and support. Um, Iran Barkley, if you could. Shout Abs out to him or Absolutely. And and that you said that um I reached out to um Mrs. Uh, Brenda Spinks. Yes, oh, Brenda good. Spinks. So I am going to we are gonna connect on the phone and, and chop it up and um we're gonna do some things. So keep you in the loop with that. Well, she'll love that. She'll love yeah. That. Um Iran is married to Pamela, who's a nurse. So he's mm -hmm. got he's got a good woman in his corner. Which is well, I'll I'll definitely um just make sure I get her number. Get her yeah. um just her Facebook, whatever. I'll get I get to people, man. Cause we gotta keep this thing. Yeah, you exactly. Know, yeah. You. We gotta build a oneness and then we gotta build a power unit. And so that's what we're gonna do. So in um, um, the world of progress, yes. uh, the fights that we saw last weekend on ESPN uh, at mm -hmm. the MGM Grand. Yes. Um yes. Al Heyman said, I'm sorry, um, What's his name? Not Al Heyman. Um, the other guy. <laughs> the old, old, the old guy. Oh. Is that it? Yes. Yeah. Um, he said that there's no more 
fights in the bubble. No, they're now going to have an actual people, people yeah. there. They're yeah, I thought I caught a win, but go ahead. Yeah, finish. Yep. Yeah, so that's exciting. That's big. Shows a little bit of progress. You know, yeah. uh, Texas and Florida, they've been able to have open arenas. Um, oh. And now Vegas, with COVID getting a little bit better, Vegas is going to, you know, pop the bubble and let, a, let us come in. So that's exciting. Yeah, and I think what will happen is, you know, that it'll, it'll, it'll happen and then they'll have a kickback and they'll have to pull back. But you're one step closer to walking in the direction of some normalcy, our new yeah. normal. And the vaccines are happening. So uh, just stay safe if you got the vaccine or not. Keep the mask on. When I was in Florida, you know, we had a plenty of social distancing because of oh, so much space. Right. You know, you got beaches and everything, but the wind's blowing. It's just it's different. And it's warm down there. People aren't right, like getting sick. So it's not a lot of viruses happening directly. Like when it's wintertime, it's cold. You're getting flus. People getting sick. It's germs. It's crazy. But uh, with that being said, it's a beautiful thing to know that patience is virtue. And with that comes progression. And then when you get to that point, once you get to that stage, you start to see the light at the end of the tunnel. The fact that we have sports going on, I don't take it lightly. I don't take it lightly at all because at any moment, you know, it could all be whisked away from us. And that reality that we had in 20, 2020, March 17th, it's still happening, right? <laughs> That's a reality, you, you know, so it lets you know, if you never thought about it, stay ready. So you don't have to get ready, mm -hmm. period. Sure. So we're going to have some really good things going into anything else on the, on the beat. Yeah. Well, we've got the Canelo fight coming up next weekend. I, I am, I am so psyched. Yeah. This is going to be historical. Yeah. Good. Trying it's, to unify those belts. Yeah. That's going to be interesting. As I looked at um, a couple of things that with Canelo and this segment right here is specifically about next week, how we will plan to do another show. So what I am going to do is Thursday we have a show and the show will be with Lynn Lee, who is CEO of Society Nine, which she makes apparel you know, for females, boxing gloves. She's uh, she using Forbes top 30 und under 30 i mean she's global powerhouse in the game wow. like anything you see like on hbo and and people got gloves on boxing gloves and apparel is a very good chance they're theirs so even when you see people training like clarissa and and over at amanda nunez in the ufc you see her stuff everywhere lynn lee is the deal so she'll be on the show on Thursday. We're going to get it popping with that Canelo fight. It's going to be off the hook. Now, the special thing that I have to let the people know that we're going to do is we're going to have a bunch of some trivia once again, and people <laughs> will have an opportunity to win in stage, in house. We're going to shoot the fight show live stream in studio. Yeah. Those people get to come in and watch the fight down here, Haley, where we hang. It won't go on social media, but Thursday on our fight show, we're going to have trivia. And so for those who win, we're going to have 10 winners, 10 winners, and they'll all get to come and rock it with Master Boxing. And it's and you also win cash prizes once again. That's I awesome. think, yeah, it's going to be super fun. And I felt like there's a way now. Do not get it twisted. The whole card will be on. I'm not commentating anything but the main event. I will be there talking some while it's rocking. I don't want to interfere with the telecast. It's just <laughs> going to be off the chain. I think everybody will have some new form of normalcy and a place where they feel like that they really getting some when they watch in boxing right here on the fight show live. <laughs> <laughs> word and so that's what we're gonna do so make sure everybody you guys tune in because that is going to be ready and have your box and trivia hats on because you want to win the opportunity to be in set on set and uh i'm excited about doing that for everybody definitely absolutely <laughs> i'll see You're you next time one. thanks everybody out there until next time be blessed at godspeed we out peace 